Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Trade Industry and Competition Minister Ibrahim Patel has outlined an ambitious target to localize 200 billion rands of additional production over a five-year period to displace non-oil imports. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this target and whether it is realistic. Hi Terence. Hi Shalom. What is the background to this 200 billion rand target? Yes, the backgrounds really are discussions at NEDLAC around the economic recovery plan from COVID. And as part of that process, we're looking at a number of uh, um, elements, components to that. We know infrastructure is a core component of it and government wanting to upscale infrastructure investment. And within that, an idea to localize as much of the inputs that will go into infrastructure as possible. And there was a fairly positive reaction during the COVID pandemic to when we had a real shortage of uh, personal uh, protective equipment and medical equipment, where the private sector really came to the fore and uh, developed quite quickly uh, productive capacity, which was used to, uh, to close the gap that had emerged from imports that weren't coming in from other countries, as well as became a, an export opportunity. So informally and then more formally, the discussion evolved to say, well, can we set a more firm target around uh, additional local production. Uh, we import about 25% of GDP, including oil, and uh, the analysis that the TTRC has done suggests that's a very high in terms of our peer countries and, and even when we compare to developed and other developing countries. So can we get, say, a, a target in mind of, say, getting 20% of uh, non-oil imports uh, localised? which would translate to around 200 billion rand. So that's really the background to this uh, sort of a view of, of the economic recovery, uh, what, local, what role local content can play in that, particularly as we get to spend quite a lot of money, hopefully, around getting our infrastructure program going. How is business responding? Yes, I think business, you know, obviously is cautious about this because the, the capacity and price issues and the competitiveness issues around localization can be quite uh, detrimental and can cause, uh, a create a weight or a, a pullback to the recovery. But it is also wanting to be cooperative. It did, it did cooperate very much around the PPE, as I said. And they've set up this uh, forum internally inside organized business where they've got 30 CEO champions, where they're going to look at specific product lines what is possible, what are the constraints, uh, where, where, where would the low-hanging fruit be in terms of local content. So there seems to be a, a, a spirit of cooperation, a spirit of you know, not full-on resistance to this plan, but I suppose also one of urging a little bit of caution, given that these can have inflationary impacts, can undermine competitiveness, can raise the cost of, for instance, the infrastructure rollout. What are some of the risks that will need to be managed? Well, I think those are the key ones. You know, the price and capacity issues are serious. So you, we know that South Africa is generally seen as a quality manufacturer. We, we produce quality products. Uh, we export, for instance, automobiles around the world. So it's not really a, we don't really have a quality problem in South Africa's manufacturing sector. We do have competitiveness issues, and these relate uh, largely to capacity, whether that's uh, hard uh, infrastructure or um, solid infrastructure to make these uh, products or even soft issues like skills, there, that does create a constraint in the market. Um, and then there's obviously the price element. When you've got economies that are producing these products on large scale and you can import them, obviously for South Africa we benefit if we can get these inputs in as cheaply as possible. So I suppose the risk to manage is what can we really do? What is realistic? Which sort of components should we uh, and inputs should we be prioritizing? And which should we say, look, we're going to leave that to the Chinas of the world. We're going to leave that to the Europe's of the world rather than trying to localize everything. So I think the big risk is not having a one size fits all approach, having a more bottom up uh, market driven. So business coming forward and saying, we think there's an opportunity here. We need this, these sort of conditions to support it. But I think it needs a partnership, it needs cooperation. It, it can't be dictate. It can't be saying that you have to get 20% in five years on all products. It has to be uh, a, a more of a, a partnership 
more of a discussion, uh, a, a constructive conversation. And it needs to be even, there needs to be an even implementation. I think this risk mitigation program in the power sector, they, we haven't really seen an even application of local content rules. I mean, to give power ships fully exemptions, uh, is, it's obviously logical because you want the, the, the lowest price from those power ships. It would be crazy to try and uh, uh, say that you have to localize that. But then when your manufacturing capacity in the renewable sector, for instance, has been decimated because you've had a seven-year gap in procurement, and then to insist on a certain fairly firm level or to a minimum threshold for, for instance, PV panels, it's, you know, it's uneven. And uh, so the exemptions didn't make sense. And it's probably going to land up raising, raising the cost and probably slowing down the, the non-power ship investments should all those projects go in. As we know, there's a lot of resistance. So we need even application. We need uh, this to be rational. We need partnership. We need cooperation. And that's the only way I think we're going to be able to manage the risk. And then obviously for South Africa is uh, managing the corruption risk. Because once you put in these uh, firm targets, um, uh, there's always a way and there's always predators out there looking at using those, abusing those targets uh, for, their own, um, for their own good and not for the sake of the country. Thank you. That's the second tag show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.